Hey, I'm Ron from Indoor Labs, and today I'm here to talk to you about SBOMs, Software Build Material. So the first thing I want to take a look at is my SBOM settings. So I'm going to go over here to Settings and over to SBOM Settings, and I'm going to take a look at the contact information that I have here for my SBOMs. And this is going to be codified into every SBOM that I create. I have it set here to Jamie Scott, who is our wonderful product manager. So I have his email, uh, supplier URL, and this is just contact information. So the consumers of my SBOM will know who to contact. So let's go over to my packages and I have my application that I want to take a look at this OWASP one. So I'm going to click into that. And we can already start to see the beginnings of a software bill of materials, right? This package has 94 dependencies. And I can also see the security findings that uh, are associated with it. I'm not going to go into the operational findings that are more about, you know, if you have something that is uh, very outdated, and it's going to cause operational issues, if I try to update it, we're going to cover that in a separate video. But I can already see all of the different vulnerabilities that are being found here. And one of the main things that Ender Labs does is it uses static analysis and call graphs to really understand how code is being used in your organization. So how did these dependencies talk to each other? If we found a vulnerability that's critical, for example, do we actually have to have developers work on it right now? Or maybe we don't because it is actually unreachable. And so a good example is this one that uh, we can take a look at this critical vulnerability and we can take a look at the call path here. And uh, we can see that this is indeed a critical vulnerability that is in a reachable dependency. And we are also actually using the vulnerable function, right? So this is really something that needs to get uh, taken care of now. The reason I'm showing you all of this is that because this is exactly the type of information that your SBOM consumers are going to be interested in. If they see a critical vulnerability associated with uh, a version of a package that you have, they're going to want to know why was that patched? Why, the, why that wasn't patched? Sorry, I get excited. All right, so let's uh, take a look at how that actually looks like. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to export data. And this is going to build my SBOM for me. So I'm going to go ahead and click on export SBOM. And let's take a look at it. So this is my SBOM. And as we said earlier, an SBOM is really just a list of all the components that go into your application. The most interesting thing in my mind about the SBOM is what it doesn't include. It doesn't include vulnerability information. You really have to have the companion of VEX for that. VEX, as we said, vulnerability and exploitability exchange is a document that annotates all of those uh, vulnerabilities. What you get here is you get a lot of information. You get all of these packages, package URLs, uh, specific versions that uh, you're using, and it goes on and on. If you just provide the SBOM by itself without the VEX document, what your consumers are going to do is they're going to take this and they're going to compare it to some known vulnerability database. And then they're going to come back to you and say, hey, guilt by association, right? There is a critical vulnerability in this package. Either prove to me that you have fixed it or prove to me why you didn't, right? So it's better to come with that evidence in advance. So let's get back to Ender Labs here. And you can see that I also have the option here to export a VEX. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And let's take a look at the VEX as well. And this is now my VEX that I'm looking at also has some vendor information here. And what this is, is a list of the vulnerabilities that we found. And for each of them, you get some information, a description. And then most importantly, you get the annotations, the actual analysis. So let's take a look at uh, a good example here. So for example, we have this vulnerability here, which is a medium, and we can see a little description for it and the advisories. But down here, we can see the analysis that's automatically being generated by Endor Labs. And this is um, exactly the thing that if you were to do this manually would be unsustainable, right? To have every developer go through every vulnerability and to annotate exactly why it wasn't patched. So state not affected means this code is uh, not reachable, right? The justification here is the reason why uh, this is this doesn't affect the application. And also it goes into 
further details on whether or not there is a uh, patch for it. So I saw a good example earlier about critical application, a critical one that uh, wasn't affected. Just uh, take uh, take this little little walk with me. Here we go. So we see this one, for example, that uh, we have a critical vulnerability. And down here in the analysis, we can prove that it is not reachable, not affected. And uh, we were able to get this with just a couple of clicks.